So uh, I wanted to tell you about how it transpired that I got kicked out, disfellowshipped, excommunicated, uh, you know, all of those words, that's what I got. Um, so as I said before, I kind of slopped kind of stopped slowly going to the meetings and talking to people about my feelings on the religion and and my lack of faith in God and um, being cross with God and stuff. Then I separated from my husband, was single for a year with two children, small children, and everyone that I knew that was a Jehovah's Witness was saying, you know, you really need to come back and be more spiritually strong because that's the only way you're going to cope through this difficult time and stuff. Um, And I just actually kept myself to myself and tried to make friends outside of the religion. There was another girl that had left a while before me and she'd actually had a baby. So we became really close because we weren't going to the meetings together and it was something that we could kind of just talk about. That was really fortunate. But my mum would come and see me and spend time with me and the children, but always bring it back round to the religion and how it is the end is coming and we can't mess around. We we really need to be really faithful and go to all the meetings and have a really good relationship with Jehovah. And I would explain to her that I just didn't think that it was the truth. And these were difficult conversations, but she just sort of would brush it off as like, you're just having a lack of faith at the moment. You're just having a blip and it will be fine. Then she uh, obviously I told her that I'd started to see someone, had a new boyfriend. He obviously wasn't a Jehovah's Witness. He was, you know, someone that I'd met and wanted to be with. I'd fallen in love. And, uh, you know, this guy was willing to come into my life and raise my two children with me and be my partner and my team player and all of this sort of stuff. And I was excited and I was happy. And at first she seemed quite, you know, open to the idea. I could hope it's nice you're moving on, but, you know, you don't want to get involved with someone that's not going to help you go back into the meetings and stuff. And she asked if she could meet him. And so uh, we arranged a dinner. And I said it was going to be weird to my partner because she's super religious. I said she might give him uh, a bit of a hard time about his beliefs and um, whether or not he should be going out with someone like me who needs to get their life back on track and stuff. So I I prepped him for it being weird. Um, And it wasn't weird. I mean, it was because my mum was there. And so thinking back now, it was weird because it was weird that I could ever be with my mum and having a meal because it's been so long now. Um, You know, this is six years ago nearly. Wow. Um, Five years ago. She came over, I cooked a meal, we sat down at the table. She obviously wanted to know about my boyfriend and what he was up to, and she told him all about her life. And she was really uh, trying to play the best friendship game, which was weird in itself because you know I I knew that she probably couldn't be best friends with us and she wouldn't just be cool with the fact that I was never going to be back going back to meetings and things and so I was kind of waiting for the the talk and it never came she was telling him about how she was really uh she loved living life on the dangerous side and would get drunk and end up going in fountains and not to tell her husband because he didn't ever know about these sort of things that she got up to and she was trying to be sort of really cool and really like trust me tell me everything like you know i'm i'm here for you i'm cool and it was a pleasant dinner actually it was a it was nice and and i spoke to my boyfriend about it afterwards and he sort of said she seems nice and kind of normal so it was It was weird. It was a bit like a a sheep in wolf's clothing. (laughs) No, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Because, um, because there was just no, there was no reprimand. There was no, you shouldn't be going out with someone who's not a Jehovah's Witness. You need to come back to the meetings now. Blah, blah, blah. There was none of that. It was just, uh, my mum had come over for a meal to meet my new boyfriend. And I was like, wow, maybe this is how life can be on the outside. Like, you can just leave, but you don't have to necessarily lose all of your friends and family over it. Huh? 
how wrong was I? Uh, because then two days later, I got a call from an elder in my congregation, same congregation that my mum went to, uh, who said, uh, you know, so I know that you've got a boyfriend now who is not a Jehovah's Witness. And I said, wow, um, yeah, like I haven't spoken to this guy for about two years. So it was a, yep, yeah, I've got a boyfriend. So he asked if we were sexually active and I said I didn't feel comfortable explaining that over the phone to him and he said that the only reason he needed to know was I was aware of the standards of Jehovah and if I was sexually active with someone as a baptised person, whether or not I was going to the meetings or had, you know, seen any of them for ages, they had to make a decision. And I said I just don't feel comfortable sharing that information with you about someone, you know, someone else, me and someone else. I don't, I don't see that it's relevant. I said I didn't consider myself as a Jehovah's Witness who was involved in all the meetings and trying to date a boyfriend and stuff, like live a double life. I'd come away. I'd not, I'd not considered myself a Jehovah's Witness for some time now. And so I didn't really want to have the conversation with him about whether I was sexually active and whether I wanted to be or felt like that was wrong or anything. Um, and so he basically just frankly said, uh, we need you to tell us that you're doing something wrong so that we can make a decision. And he kept saying these words over and over again, we need to make a decision what to do with you. And I just said, well, I've made my decision. My decision is I don't really believe it anymore. And I would like you to leave me alone. I don't really want to answer to you at the moment about things. And it was left like kind of weird he didn't say that I was disfellowshipped on the phone he didn't say that you know he because I hadn't admitted the words that I'd I'd had sex with someone and I wasn't sorry because I didn't say that he kind of felt like he couldn't he didn't know what to say to me and so um two days after that my mum had said it was announced that you are no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses at our congregation this means I can't speak to you anymore. And so I was like, okay. And it is an interesting way for it to go because basically it was my mum had come over for a meal with me and my partner to meet him and to find out that he was real. And, you know, I don't think we were like, mum, we're, we're shagging. Because <laughs> why would you? He was just my boyfriend. He didn't live with me. He just came over for the evening. And I think she was trying to get out of us whether or not what we were. Um, because... Technically, if we'd not been sleeping together, um, they wouldn't have been able to disfellowship me, disfellowship me because I wouldn't have been really committing a sin. And so it's the technicality of it that they needed me to admit that I was. Um, and my mum had obviously come over to find out if I was. And we weren't going to be like, yeah. But we weren't going to be like, oh no, we absolutely don't. So... They just came to the decision that I was as good as sleeping with him. And I think because on the phone I said I don't consider myself as one of Jehovah's Witnesses anymore, um, that was enough for them to be like, that's an admission because Jehovah's Witnesses shouldn't do stuff like that. So I was then disfellowshipped and my mum wrote me a letter from my granny to say that she couldn't speak to me anymore. And I know that that's not what my granny thinks well she's passed on now but at the time I knew that that wasn't what my granny thought but my mum obviously needed to make sure that everyone completely cut me out of their lives because I think she was done with having to come over and spend time with me and have me keep saying I don't believe in these things and me not coming back to the meetings it was stressing her out and then especially when I got a boyfriend, she didn't want to have to come and spend time with me and my boyfriend and know that I was um, living in sin or anything. And so it's easier for her in a way to have just gone, Abby's doing something really naughty, you need to boot her out. The elders to come together and say, actually, we just boot her out, she's not our responsibility anymore and she can do what she wants. And then I was booted out and that makes life easier for everyone. And that was it. And that was the last time I spoke to all of the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs>